Last week, the Financial Times hosted its fourth annual Global Commodities Summit in Switzerland. We attracted some of the biggest names in the commodity trading industry to come and talk about the key themes and issues facing the sector at the moment. One of the big issues was oil and what happens with the price going forward. Here with me to discuss some of the things we heard at the conference is Angeli Ravel, the FT's oil and gas correspondent. Angeli, a pretty bullish picture from the delegates at our conference anyway. People seem to have quite a positive view on where the oil price is, is heading and also saying that it's probably bottomed for the year. Some of the biggest oil traders from, from Gunvor to Vito said the worst is behind us um, and we're likely to see a, a pickup uh, in, oil, in the oil price and we're unlikely to go back to the lows that we saw earlier on this year. However, at the same time as our conference was going on, um, one was going on in Houston and the biggest energy companies actually were, hung they said they were hunkering down for a period of much lower prices. So really a consensus hasn't emerged as to sort of where we're going here. So that's quite surprising. The oil companies are less bullish than the trading houses. I mean, why are the trading houses more bullish then? Is this because they see production slowing or is it because they're more bullish on, on the demand picture than the oil companies? Well, since the start of the year, demand has picked up and there seems to be questions around whether or not this demand is here to stay. Now, some of the oil traders have said that, you know, gasoline demand is back with a vengeance and they're really pushing that story. But there are other people questioning whether or not the demand pickup will be, um, will be enough to offset pick, a pickup in production, not just from the US, which is still carrying on um, a quite a resilient, is still quite resilient. Um, and at the same time, OPEC production is, is, has picked up a lot as well. But it, but it seems then that the price is in, you know, helping to improve demand at the moment. I mean, we are probably looking at, what, over a million barrels a day of you know, uh, demand growth this year? Yes, and that's up from around sort of 600, 600 700 uh, thousand barrels a day last year. Uh, and this is really led by countries like China and, and India. Um, but what is still not clear is, is the production picture here. Uh, US production is likely to, to slow down going for, over the next several months. Um, but at the same time, as I already mentioned, OPEC production has picked up. The Saudi Arabia is producing in excess of 10 million barrels a day. So how all of this comes together, there really isn't a consensus here. And nobody really understands the timing. Okay, well, if we can just turn to the conference a bit more widely, um, what, what were the other themes you think that, that came out um, um, from it? I mean, regulation was discussed quite a bit by some of the big big commodity trading companies. Um, I thought that was interesting. It looks like the industry is finally waking up to the fact that they could be hit with um, big capital charges uh, akin to what the banks are facing at the moment if they deal in financial derivatives, also sort of hard position limits as well. It was quite interesting to hear that coming over from, from the trading houses. Was, you know, were there any other themes that, that you thought were interesting? Uh, transparency was another issue for a lot of the oil traders in light of what's happened at Noble Group. Um, some of the biggest oil traders from, so it, that were on our panels were saying that banks and others have been asking more questions about their accounting practices. Yeah, I mean, I had sort of five of the big CFOs on one of the panel. It was very interesting to hear that the banks are, as you say, coming to them and saying, look, Noble's had these issues. Can you explain to us how you book long-term commodity contracts? Can you explain how this is accounted for? I mean, it does seem that there is, there is some sort of, not nervousness perhaps, but, but perhaps confusion on uh, as to actually how these companies make their money. And, and it's interesting that some of the private ones look like they've been very sort of proactive in, in pushing messages to the banks saying we do this, we don't do this. So, I mean, I thought that was interesting. Um, a lot of the oil traders said that they were using this as an opportunity to just explain to banks what they do. But this is all part of a, of a broader push towards transparency. But how much of this is just talk? Well, I mean, it's difficult to assess, really, but I think we are seeing more transparency from some of the traders. Certainly, we get more financial information than we used to. Uh, people like Traffic Euro now produce a big annual report. Um, OK, some of the other trading houses don't produce sort of, um, you know, detailed financial numbers at the moment, but then they don't raise money from the public market. So I think the industry is becoming a bit more transparent, and I think it has to be because there is this big regulatory push coming. Noble are now also promising sort of greater disclosure as well. So, I mean, I think overall the industry is becoming a bit easier to understand.